this is structured so that you can see that there are no consistent yeses or noes across the design. Uh, so they're all really quite different. So it's all to paper here. There's no uniform. What I thought of in January would be there'd be a big convergence. So the five out now, we know how to do these things and we just do it. Uh, NAMA 2.0 is, is my little revision to NAMA where instead of paying the, the bank in bonds for the bad assets, you say, no, we're going to pay a little bit in bonds, but we're actually going to give the rest an equity claim to the, to the shareholders, not to the bank, to the shareholders in the asset recovery agency. What's that going to do? It's actually going to uh, leave the uh, shareholders a little bit hopeful, but it'll also lead, lead to a situation where there's almost certainly going to be zero or very little uh, equity value left in the bank, so you're going to have to have new, new shareholders made in the bank. Um, I also have, a, have a, a table which goes through uh, how they perform on the four criteria. You're, why, what are you doing? You're trying to replace assets of uncertain value with safe, marketable assets. Yeah. Marketable is important. Marketable means you can place it, for example, with the European Central Bank as a collateral or a repo operation. You get some uh, low interest uh, liquidity to make new loans. Remove the distraction of recovery. You can make new, sensible loans and not, you're not wasting your time worrying about mistakes of the past. Improve loan recovery by separating from originators. A little bit controversial, but most people think this is very important. And that's why you separate it out from the bank. Sometimes people have an you know, outhouse of the bank, but separating it completely, but if, when you're talking about very large loans that really were came out of the heart of the institution. Taxpayer protection. You know, some of these schemes are very bad on taxpayer protection. Gleitner's property the worst, except only for the Chinese. <laughs> two, two final slides. Sequencing is crucial for the financial restructuring. Because if you start putting in the money first and then decide who's going to take the losses, you will find that you're locked into contracts. You have given the money and you have automatically benefited some people that you, you know, later on would say, well, we don't want them to win, but actually we gave them the money. And already the three and a half million that's gone in is in this, has this feature to it, three and a half into each of those banks. And it could happen as well if, if money was put into an agro bank. So you've got to decide, first of all, what, what are your mark-to-market -market valuations? What are, what's are going to be your real decision on this? Are you going to allow the, this uh, very gentle flow valuation? Are you going to put mark-to-market -market valuations? The one merit of the asset purchase scheme is, it is mark-to-market, -market. you're going to have a market, then you're going to buy it. So you're going to insist, not on a flow calculation, but on a stock calculation. You decide who is to be bailed in. Shareholders for sure, but now I think we're beginning to be able to talk a little bit more freely because of uh, people uh, have uh, discussed this more openly. There are other people out there, other uh, providers of risk capital, subordinated debt holders, unguaranteed subordinated debt holders. They would be counted in in any other country, so I think they would be considered here. Decide on the terms of the deal, seek new equity in the Kingdom Bank. Yeah, team that bank there, some of the existing shareholders might be prepared to, to buy. Of course, it was only small shareholders. The 10,000 people who got went into bank shares last year were only small players. But in a clean-up situation, I think we could find some uh, outside buyers. Maybe official buyers. You know, I don't have any money in Dubai anymore. Maybe in the European community, European investment. I don't know. Everybody should be starting to discuss where are you going to get a shareholder that's independent of the government? Because having just the government as the shareholder is a big risk factor for the taxpayer. It's a big risk factor, even if it's the European Investment Bank that's the other shareholder. Then the manager can say, I know you're telling me that for the good of the country you have to make this loan, but I can't recover on this loan. And I have another shareholder that I am legally obliged to have regard. Decide how much an animal will actually buy now, much less than, than, than Peter Bacon is talking about. I don't think we should be going for those big numbers now, maybe down the road we do something. And then you finally do the check. So the, the sequencing is important. Um, and yeah, I have run out of time completely. So my au revoir, my, the points that I was going to make at the end and leave you with, I have to make in discussion. And I leave you with my little picture since you don't like the. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we, we have about 
seven minutes in total. So what I suggest is maybe we take uh, four very sort of uh, sharply stated questions, uh, and then we'll uh, uh, give the rest of the time to, to Patrick to respond. Okay, uh, I'm sure there are lots of questions on this topic, so uh, a lot more than four, but uh, who wants to ask first? Frank. The 20 billion you suggest taking out of the bank's account, mm. um, what 20 billion is that? Is that? Does that not leave in lots of the bad loans? So in that sense, how is it cleaned up? Well, of course they've written down. Oh, sorry, I'm not. I'm not well, it's up to you. Do you want to take one at a time? No, no problem. Okay. Next question. People are getting hungry, I think. Uh, yeah. I suppose we possibly should have a little fun at the expense of the academic economists who wrote to the Irish Times there recently. I noticed, Patrick, your name wasn't one of them. Uh, they and Emmett Oliver had a, a description of the last Sunday's Tribune. It was interesting reading. Um, <coughs> I won't go into the detail. Um, <laughs> well, he described more or less as 20 hitherto largely anonymous public sector pension levy paying academic economists, right? Um, but um, they, it would be fair to say that they missed the E in camel. And if so, are they really donkeys? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question here in the middle. Hi, um, actually, I have a question on banks and current practice. Um, but... Hello, um, that's that Noel Cahill. Um, just a question on the current bank practice. I think you mentioned that I think banks aren't squeezing credit much in terms of volume. Um, and so that's not the impression that you get from business associations. I wonder what you make of the discussion at present. You're off for the soft debt uh, yesterday. Uh, it's indicated that 47% or so of the subordinated debt will be wiped out. Uh, is that a fair price to pay? Is it too much or too less or too little? Or, um, and would you expect AIB to follow through with something similar? And last question. Brendan Burgess from AskAfoney.com. Surely the approach of six banks must be completely different. Um, AIB and Bank of Ireland are, by all agreement, sustainable sustainable works in the Irish economy. Irish Nationwide and Anglo Irish Bank are certainly more important than more. And I would imagine that. Great, so sorry there isn't more time, but if you have about four minutes, uh, yeah. Patrick, you want to take it there, and assume you'll go straight to closing comments. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks, thanks very much. Um, okay, uh, 20 million, does that, would that not leave uh, a, a lot of that? Debt. Yes, it would leave a lot of bad loans in the banks, but these would have been written down to realistic levels. You remember the difference, distinction I'm making between the recapitalization of financial restructuring and the asset purchase. I'm really suggesting that uh, the uh, this uh, Bacon 1.0 scheme, it not only did it buy all the develop does it buy all the development loans that are bad, it buys stuff that is performing. So it's based on a, some kind of vision that there should be one big property developer in the state. I don't think we can afford that luxury. I don't think we can gross, move out the gross figures uh, that much. Uh, I want the bank's assets to be written down to be put to credible levels, but probably, realistically, the banks will have to manage most of the smaller loans, loan recovery themselves. Uh, it just, there's just too, too, too much out there. That's, that's what we're thinking. Further away, sorry. Yeah, okay. um, uh, yeah um, Camo, did, did I don't know whether whether uh, Pat's question Im, Im, implies that uh, you you're a believer in the flow support uh, approach and that the earnings will be there and, and going on there. But I, I know that Ulster Bank are not in the scheme, so that you know there's, there's um, no no problem from that point of view. I, I don't. Um, I, I think that uh, the problem somebody might ask, and I thought maybe Carl, why did why go through all this fuss about NAMA and that? And, and you know that's, that's a point, point of view. But I think that we're not at the stage where uh, everybody agrees that these banks are indubitably at zero equity capital. Uh, and, and that is a difficulty with the preemptive uh, 
nationalization. There are other difficulties too, uh, preemptive nationalization without the